Okay. Um, welcome everybody. This is the regular October 28th, 2024 meeting of the Native Historical Commission. Um, this meeting is being held entirely on Zoom in accordance with the acts of 2023. Audience members and attendees are advised that this meeting is being recorded. All votes will be taken by roll call. And my clock will stop chiming in a moment. Um, okay, the first item on our agenda is the Need of Revitalization Trust Fund proposal. So if you want to let Paul and Eddie in, then they won't have to wait around for our other business. They should be in now, Madam Chair. Okay. Good hi, evening. Ed. Hi. Hi. And Paul, hi. Oh, Paul, you're very summery for this time of year. <laughs> well, this is my fall collection. <laughs> okay, I can see. That's right. They're turning red. I can see. And it's, and it's long sleeve, see? So, <laughs> it's a long sleeve Hawaiian shirt. Hi. Okay. Hi. Um, I would like to introduce Ed Olson, who is the town's forester, head of the forestry department, and Paul Good. Director of the Needham Community Revitalization Trust Fund. Last spring, um, they sent us some design proposals for the um, transformer boxes in on the town common, and we did have some comments and wanted to have some discussion about that. So they're back with us to to have that discussion now. Um, I did circulate the the images to everybody. Does everybody still have them, or do I need to share them? I didn't see them, but. Oh, okay. Oh, that's true. I'm sorry. Um, just a second. Let me see if I can. I mean, I can also share this, share my screen and I can. Uh... Uh, yeah, that may be, maybe that bit could probably the more recent ones anyway. So Miles, is that doable? Paul, are you able to do that right now with your current settings? There's host disabled. Great. Let me go and allow this real quick. Thank you for your patience in advance. <clears throat> okay, now these boxes are for the two trans these these designs are for the two transformer boxes on the town common, which are currently a sort of boring shade of green and the proposal is to make them uh, more attractive and make them more of a design element on the common and fit in a little bit better with the um, planting strategy. Well, you should be able to share your screen now. Mm -hmm. the things I have put us on the side will be able to come up so you can see them. And as Paul is queuing that up, I just want to say thank you again for having us. Gloria is right. We were back earlier with some uh, design uh, iterations. And I think tonight you'll see that we've come back with uh, some new, uh, new iterations of the boxes and uh, I think they kind of blend in with the theme that Paul has with the revitalization trust fund around town, trying to bring art back into public spaces. And hopefully you'll like them. And uh, and I think it's one of the final elements to the town common renovation project. There was the, the boxes and the bus shelter and the bus shelter has been delivered and it's in the process of being um, gonna be assembled soon. And really this was kind of the final process of uh, really improvements to the town common. So thank you so much for your time tonight. And Paul is now on his screen, so I'm going to mute and let him take over. All right. Let's see if we can get the full cooperation of the technical. Um, let's see if this will pull up. So this, 
this is basically it's it's very large, but <laughs> uh, because the format is high res, but um, basically this design came out of and i'll scroll this down here it came out of um the discussions we had uh back in the spring about um where we had shared three different sort of styles of of um you know design concepts and one of the things that that uh you know came out of that discussion was a desire to be able to have these uh the the, the boxes not only have you know an uplifting you know, very positive feel to it, um, but also to make them so that they would integrate into the sort of the landscape and design of the common itself. And one of the things that we had done um, a number of years ago is we'd done one of the uh, uh, art box wraps uh, at um, Eaton Funeral Home, <clears throat> where the box is actually in the sidewalk. <laughs> and uh, so we thought, you know, rather than turn it into something sort of um, independent, that it would be conceptually better to take the theme of the boxwoods that were already behind this box and then integrate that box into the boxwoods and then add some whimsy, like a pair of shears and some clippers and some gloves, like someone who was trimming the boxwood would just, you know, sort of walked off and had a coffee. So, you know, that was one of the examples that we brought up in terms of, um, you know, the, our, our meeting as uh, the kind of thing where we could make it you know, basically be fun, um, but also feel more integrated. So that's where the concept of using the grass uh, came into play. Another thing about the boxes is because, um, you know, as you're aware, there are three different boxes, all of different sizes and shapes, all on each one of these pedestals. So whatever design you create has to be able to integrate from 360 view um, and still look like, you know, like you don't, you don't have um, uh, objects, you know, wrapping around corners or, you know, creating, um, you know, uh, images that just show up in sort of not random, but, you know, difficult places to be able to be viewed from all angles. So in, by using the grass as the theme, that um, we can accomplish that. And of course, the sky blends nicely <laughs> in, all, in all corners, wherever you go. So that, uh, so that works out great. Um, and then at the top, although you can't see it completely in this, or you just have to imagine that at the very top, this design also wraps over the top of the box. And on the one that, that is taller than the other, it'll actually then wrap down the other side uh, to just below where the sight lines are for uh, looking at it from another direction. So the only place that's not covered in the bo in the box is this narrow channel that's between two of the boxes that unless you literally stand sideways to the box and look in you um and, and the other part of it is that to be able to wrap that inner side is very difficult because you can't really get in there to be able to um you know compress it the way it needs to be to be able to perfectly adhere adhered and so on this allows you to be able to look at this as basically from all angles um, and even from the top. So if you're looking from, you know, from uh, Powers Hall, you'll be able to see the clouds on the top of the boxes. Or if you're looking from some of the businesses that are two stories that are uh, around the common, the same kind of effect. So from above and from 360 degrees around each one of these boxes, um, you'll have a, have basically a, um, you know, a complete view. Then added into it, you can see we have some animal friends here at the bottom. And uh, um, this um, I'll, I'll, when we get to the next uh, uh, image, I'm going to show you that uh, you'll be able to see that these animals um, that you'll see in the in the, uh, the final renderings are actually real life animals from Needham. Um, that they were photographed by Susie Fresco Johnson, um, who is a an outstanding um, high res um, uh, nature photographer, and. She has taken pictures of rabbits because we know we have rabbits in Needham. <laughs> and uh, uh, there are also the birds um, and uh, a chipmunk, um, a few, you know, a few things like that, as well as even actually the butterflies uh, that are in here. Those are all pictures that have come from her archives uh, that were taken in Needham. So we wanted to be able to bring as much of, of Needham into the image at the same time. And one of the great things about the the way that we've um, constructed this design is the fact that the base 
of the grass and the stones in the bottom and so on will be around the bottom, uh, around the box rather. And then what you'll see um, added in are the animals because we can actually, because once the box is wrapped, then we install the butterflies and the and the, the rabbits and so on so that they always place properly um, in any of the different faces. And it allows us to be able to have uh, you know, one picture, we have a picture of the uh, of a rabbit uh, hopping away. Um, we have one who's sitting. Um, you know, we have some variations in the uh, in the animals and the birds. So that when you look at one box versus the other, they'll have these slight variations between how they're configured. So that was basically where the, um, you know, the, how the concept evolved and uh, sort of the, uh, you know, design and engineering behind um, how this is all uh, put together. Uh, does anyone have any questions from here? I can show you some other. Uh, uh, you also had a design showing it, you know, showing it on the box, sort of in the, placed in yeah. the common. Can yes. You show one of those? Yes, I, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if we can pull that one. Paul, I also think I have a copy of these that you'd sent out that I can share as well. I, I, I do that, have those yeah. ready. Great. I think uh, this, let me see if this is the one with the colored base. Yeah, here's the one. Yeah. This, yeah, this is the rendering of what it would look like um, with the existing concrete base just the way it is. Because mm -hmm. we wanted to sort of show you both versions. And so if I go back here, and let's see if it'll continue to help me here. Um, let's get to, there it is. This one. So you can see this is basically by taking the, a color that's very similar to the mulch that's around the garden mm -hmm. um, and blending it in, it creates, let me see if I can pull this back just a little bit. that it tends to blend the base you know into the background so that your your attention comes to the grass and the you know and the rabbits and and you know animals and so on so um what what's your thought between the two of them um well my thought is i prefer the brown base actually i think it blends in a little bit better uh, the image that I circulated was an earlier one that had cattails. Um, this, which looks like irises just finishing blooming, I think is much better. Um, there are no cattails on the common, but we do have irises and right. Irises, so, yeah, that is preferable. I, I just as a sort of matter of personal taste, um, go easy on the critters too. I mean, it, it could get. Oh, uh, yeah, this this has only two. The previous rendering had three or four. So yeah, so I think that's they're they're a little bit of them goes kind of a long way. I agree. I agree with you. Um, the reason that you see them sort of consolidated into one of the images so that you could see more of the animals that would be there, but yeah. because we're actually going to install the animals after the box um, base is wrapped, the animals mm -hmm. will be distributed. <laughs> Around, but we didn't have a way of being able to show you sort of all angles um, oh. and animals being distributed just from the because it's a complex kind of thing to try to render. <laughs> but but since we will, you know, we will actually be, um, you know, distributing the animals uh, on both boxes so that a, a little exactly as you said, um, it's not going to look like uh, Animal Farm. <laughs> it's gonna, it's it's, 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 it's yeah. It's, yeah, it's going to be you know a bird is here. The the um, uh, the butterflies will probably be um, you know very similar to what they are because of the upper yeah. their, the upper image. Um, yeah. That's that's exactly what will happen. They'll get distributed in smaller. Uh, you know. I, that said, there have been times this summer when there were seven eight rabbits on my lawn at the same time. So <laughs> it's, not, it's not implausible. Um, does anybody else have questions or comments? I do. So. Yes. To to that end, the multiple uh, rabbits on Gloria's lawn. 
Um, I'm going to say something probably really unpopular. I think the rabbits are kind of gross. They go, they gross me out. They're kind of just disgusting to me. And so when I see the rabbit, I think, ugh. I know a lot of people think the rabbits are really cute. I think we have so many other really cute rabbits that, I mean, animals in the town that may not elicit the ew. I know I'm not the only one, but maybe I'm the only one in the group. So I apologize if I'm offending you, but I just think the rabbits are gross and they're they're pests. Um, they they poop everywhere. I mean, I just think ew. There's like so many beautiful animals that I see all the time and eat them. There's you know great blue herons and frogs, hawks every day multiple kinds of birds and butterflies. I'm just wondering if we're wedded to the hair. <laughs> <laughs> but but please just tell me to shut up if that's not welcome, because I know a lot of people think they're really cute. No, your opinion is always welcome. Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, what, what do other people think? I mean, you know, we can, you know, we can modify an animal. Um, so, uh, but, you know, at the sa same time, we want to make sure that we're doing things that, you know, that the, uh, you know, the general population and a lot of little kids you know, would be attracted to come over to see. So that was the that was sort of the concept behind it. So, you know, what's what are your thoughts? Um, I don't have as strong an opinion as so hard as as far as the, the rabbits, but I also don't think that they're critical to the success of the piece. I think the grass and the butterflies and even the stones I think they've come a long way from what we've seen before and I do like the brown base um for me I like this image that we're looking at now a little bit more than the one that we had been looking at before because it was actually the pansies that were um not quite doing it for me in that image and I love pansies it's just they very much look plopped in whereas the other stuff looks more like I know it's a it's a wrap, but this is like selling it more than with the pansies. It was a little more like, oh, it's photoshopped. Yeah, and actually, what you were looking at was a what was one of the earlier renderings um, of the base of the box. So, in fact, um, if what I'm going to do is I'll pull up the I'll pull up the uh, the is the design that was the evolved, completely devolved design that is like this. Um, and you can see, you know, see the difference, but the, yeah, you're right. The pansies, <clears throat> the, the you know, the pansies were part of an initial, well, maybe it'd be nice to be able to introduce this, but then when we started to look at, well, how is the base going to be? And, you know, that probably these um, stones or, or things that will look more like, you know, mulch and ground cover and so on, uh, the pansies didn't fit, so you know. So that's that's why I went to the side. So I I, I agree with you, <laughs> and uh, and you're absolutely right. That's that was sort of um, one of the things that happens. These you know the um, uh, these iterations they were probably um, I'd say close to twenty um, evolutionary um, you know design pieces that go into uh, and, and basically any of those things we do like this are are like that in fact even if you know you look at the uh from need to the world uh design that that goes through 15 18 20 iterations just to be able to get to what you see when, <laughs> when it actually gets presented so so yeah that's that's it and, and it, it happens from you know a, lo a lot of just different discussions and and uh, what works do you want me to call up that other one if you want, if I can here? Show you that one. I'll also show you something else. Um, so this was more of the grass. I can't, well, let me see if I can move our pictures out of the way here. So that's the that's the comp you know the uh, um, compiled all the animals and the grass background, and so these like the birds and so on and uh, the rabbits would be or whatever um, will be would be distributed as just things to discover on an individual box, you know when you're looking at it from a certain angle. 
but these these as i said these birds um and the other animals are all actual photographs of real animals who were photographed in need of And the next piece of it is just to give you an idea also, is that when you get to the, the actual stage of being able to put this on the box, this is gives you an idea of the complexity of the of the design that you have to work with. Because you take not only the, you know, the individual design, um, but now you have to reflect it onto different size boxes, different sides um, all around the the piece. Oh, I love the concept. Well, that's great. How's everyone else feel? Yeah, I I like it. Um, I think it is more in fitting than what we had looked at last time. And I do like that the um, animals are kind of placed afterwards so you can really get in there and decide like oh the bird really wants to go here and the butterfly really wants to go there i think that really helps it not feel quite so plastered on there because there is still that not that there is an artistry in the rest of it but there is just kind of that in place customization artistry that that's still going to happen and i think that goes a long way well great Thank you. Thank you. I agree with you. Yeah, and I think um, you know, as we said, less is less is more. You're trying to strike the balance between, you know, a little bit of whimsy, um, something that's attractive to families and kids, and you know, something that has an integrity of design. Um, and that's going to evolve, you know, a little bit as as you as you do this. Um, does anybody else have comments? And what I, do had a, you I had a mean? question here. Yeah, hi, Joe. This is Joe. Um, I guess I was by one of the at the last meeting last year was one person who didn't care for the design. So I was looking more for like historical pictures of um, the town to be incorporated on those, kind of like very similar to like what Newton does. Um, however, with that being said, uh, I think the bush is probably the glorious point to Paul is going to attract be more attractive to the, the younger kids and families. Um, it, can you adjust the colors at all? Or is this kind of, to me, I mean, it's nice, um, but look at it, it's almost like a cartoon setting because of the vibrant colors of it. Um, so I don't know, because if, if you look, if you noted the one across next to the funeral home across from St. Joe's, um, I mean, I walk past that one often. I mean, it is a, it's a great design, but those the colors on that are not uh, like you don't even to your point, uh, Paul. Like you don't even notice it because it kind of blends right in with the the um, the, the the bushes behind it because they're kind of, it's more of a muted green on it. It's very like matte. It's not as vibrant. Um, I don't know if you're if that's not what you're going for here, but I just I do feel like looking at this, you know, in that setting there with that hearth behind it. It kind of looked like a cartoon screen to me. Um, nothing, you know, against the design, but it, it's pretty. It's pretty bold. Um, be, and behind, you know, the, that beautiful, you know, uh, town hall, which is very historic in nature. I, I personally, this is just my opinion. I think it looks out of place. But um, you know, I'm here for you know support whatever the majority feels. So uh, that's just my two cents. Well, Joe, I mean, it's, that's a very good point. I, um, one of the things that um, uh, that happens um, with this material is that over time it gets more muted, and that was the, when we first did the boxwood wrap. Um, and I know that for all of us, you know, our memory is most related to what we've seen within the last, you know, short, relatively short period of time. But if we fast rewind. To the to the time when we installed that box, um, it was a very it was bright, um, as if you know the, if those boxwoods were in you know absolute you know greenery, <laughs> it was slightly more um, robust than the uh, than the boxwoods were, but uh, because over time 
um, the, everything gets more muted because you know they're exposed to the sun and so on. That uh, that the same thing will happen with this. That it will start to it'll it'll, it'll mellow. Um, and if you don't start with the brighter color, that if you start with something muted, then it starts to actually uh, you know become um, less than any kind of vibrancy in the uh, in the design over that same period of time. So uh, I think um, it's a little like when we did the um, uh, the Willett and Chadwick coal sign um, that you know we were restoring what was on the on the wall um, back around 1910 1920, and so when we uh, had it repainted to be what it was it looked brand new. Um, but, you know, now even just a, just a couple of years ago, I had, I had spoken to the painter who had, uh, who had uh, uh, done it. And uh, I said, you know, I just wanted to check to see if you think there's anything we should like, you know, touch up or, you know, do it. And he said, he said, you know, the reality is that it, it looks really looks like a historic, <laughs> you know, uh, wall mural that has been there for a long time, the way it is. He said, until you start losing like words or things like that, um, he said, I wouldn't, uh, you know, I wouldn't mess with it because it looks more like what people expect, a, you know, a, um, you know, an aged mural to look like. So um, each one of these things really goes through that project. Um, as Joe, as far as also you, you know, I've I've seen um, some very beautiful designs that um, that the town of Newton has done um, with their box wraps and using the, you know, the historic uh, elements of it. Um, and uh, and on a single box, that kind of thing can work because you can, you only have one dimension, you know, basically one easily uh, scoped dimension to do. But when you take multiple boxes and put them all together, uh, it makes it a much more complex, uh, more difficult design project. And uh, um, so we were looking for something that would would allow, um, you know, positivity and, um, you know, sort of an uplifting feeling, um, but would also allow us to be able to integrate it throughout all the boxes uh, and, and have it look, you know, uniform. So. Paul, Paul are these, are we reviewing boxes just for the common? Because I thought I saw around town some other boxes that have been painted. Yes. Um, well, uh, what's basically one of the things that happened is we, we started the original um, art box uh, wrap program and uh, and actually kicked it off with the uh, the one at Eaton Square Funeral Home. Um, after that went in, that um, we also have another design for one for Thorpe Park, which is completely different. Um, and that's just basically just waiting for funding. But uh, in the interim, that the um, uh, Needham uh, uh, Council for Arts and Culture uh, got really excited about it too. And so we basically just helped them with getting the process started so that they could do theirs in other places around town. And so they have they have done uh, at least three, I think it is, um, in different places. And, you know, and we're, you know, we, we basically, um, in a number of things we've done, we sort of have done the groundwork to be able to get the program of its type established. Um, but, you know, we're not the sole owner of the, <laughs> you know, of the control where, you know, we're looking to be able to have, um, you know, certainly the the art associations and so on um, be able to, you know, uh, join together to be able to do more of these types of artistic projects uh, throughout. And we cooperate and, you know, talk about wh who's who's doing what box and, <laughs> and which boxes are actually available. And um, one of the things we had to do early on when we were setting up the original program is we had to, uh, we worked with the town to be able to find out since we have different intersections that are being remodeled. And when that happens, the boxes get taken out and new ones get put in. We had to make sure that we knew which ones were on what schedule uh, to be able to be removed since we wouldn't want to put a design in and then three years later have the box <laughs> removed. <laughs> so, so yeah, there, I mean, there's a, you know, there's a number of things that go on with this, but that's, you know, sort of an understanding of, you know, what we I, I think um, also um, specifically, uh, Zohar, is the common is considered a historic district. So the Historical Commission has review over changes to the common, which is not the case for, you know, other other parts of town where some of these boxes 
might stand. I know there's one on the corner of uh, Webster and Great Plain, for example, um, that has a, it's like a water slide, but an elaborate pool, pool slide. Um, that wouldn't come up to us because that's not within the okay. historical commission's um, purview. That's good to know. Also, um, Joe and Paul, I was actually going to comment that I really love the vibrancy of the color right before Joe, you said <laughs> you muted, but so I guess it's just so personal. Well, and, and I think the reality is you know, you'll both get what you want. <laughs> <laughs> just at different times. You just have to, that's right. You have to wait a little. It's, a, it's <laughs> a good balance. Well done. <laughs> well done. Uh, does anybody else have anything they want to say about this? What do you need from us, Paul? Uh, basically just, you know, your... Uh, do we need a motion or just um, right now we're reviewing until you have a final or? Well, I, well, you can consider this. I mean, this is basically the final stage. So, okay. uh, you know, if if this if what we've discussed and, um, you know, and the concept and so on is is good, then we yeah, we would love a motion to be able to, uh, you know, approve the uh, the concept. And then the next thing we will do is then go to the uh, select board um, with your decision and the design, of course, and uh, uh, because they are you know, the other, um, you know, sort of oversight for the things in the public view. So, because, uh, you know, like anything else, we want to make sure that the, that uh, any of the projects we, that we do that, that, you know, go through those sort of public space, because we do some things with, with landlords who then they go through design review and so on uh, as the landlord to be able to get the approval. So that's a slightly different process that they work through. But on these types of things, any of the ones in the public spaces that we, uh, you know, we bring into the uh, select board uh, for the, you know, whether it's banners or, you know, uh, or uh, other types of types of things. Um, and if there are, you know, like we, we, we do the celebration benches that are around town that have the inlaid plaques and so on. And to do those, each individual, um, uh, location uh, is overseen by someone so like you know things at greens field is park and recreation you know things on the common um like with the benches and so on like that were um you know were done through the select but this was a transformation of the town common and this this uh actually design piece of it was part of the entire approved program to um transform the the uh, town common into the new design and this is the last piece basically of their of their concept will there be any pictures any historical pictures up on the common because i think that's a brilliant idea and i loved like for example the advert for the rededication of the grover building had a beautiful kind of two-piece you know sort of the new town hall and then sort of the old-fashioned town you know picture from back then and it just integrated it so beautifully well, I mean, if there are, if there are opportunities to be able to do those kinds of things, we you know we'll certainly uh, you know be you know totally open to be able to help and and uh, and if you know or or the design work or any of those kinds of things, we you know we're happy to be able to to help you know promote anything that makes the town you know more beautiful and that is something that would be also um, uh, we work with basically uh, hardscape related things. You know, like we don't do gardens and we don't do things like that 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 uh, uh, you know require require constant maintenance. Um, that uh, all the projects that we do, you know, like benches and archways and the sculptures and uh, you know things like that are all things that that uh, you know they they're made with the highest quality materials and then they're they're very durable so they require the minimum amount of of uh, long term maintenance. And even with these boxes, that if you know. Um, you know, 10 or more years from now that the, you know, either the, the design has been damaged by some way or, or we decide we want to be able to do something else, um, that this can all be removed from the box with no damage to the box whatsoever. And either the box could be restored to what it was or a new concept for a new, a new design can be installed. Um, when we first started talking about this, I don't even know, Paul, if you were, well, I guess you must have been involved, but we did go through a series of historic photos as possible images for these boxes. Um, it turned out to be extremely difficult to find photos that 
had the correct aspect ratio so they would fit sort of within the structure of the boxes. And also um, these aren't like, um, you know, saltine boxes just straight up and down. There's a sec, there are two parts, there's two parts to them. And finding an image that would work in that, in that multi box structure just turned out to be um, very, very difficult. So there, there are, I hope, places where we could do that. I know, you know, as you said, Newton does it extremely well, but those are sort of single box installations. And it's, it's like putting a, just putting a sleeve over a rectangle. And in that case, I think it would work quite well. But these that are multi-part boxes, um, it just really, it, it was too difficult to try and find anything that worked well in this context. And, you know, when, when Ed, uh you know, contacted me and and said, you know, you, I wasn't involved in that for in, in that first process, but but that uh, um, Ed explained to me what it is they were, you know, trying to do, and said, you know, it, it's really become, uh, you know, a, a difficult thing to be able to try to solve uh, properly because of it, and its combination of resolution of images, sizing of the images, you know, how it all comes together, and uh, so that's why you know we sat down and started to talk about it, and then we brought some concepts, you know, to your committee um, so that we could, you know, move through it because we, you know, we understood the complexity of this particular, you know, uh, situation because <laughs> it's, it, you know, it isn't, it isn't simple, but we've had, a, you know, we've had a lot of experience with doing a variety of other different things. So that was helpful. Okay. Then I'm going to propose a motion, I guess. Um, so uh, let me know if you guys want to amend this or rewrite it before it gets entirely proposed, but this is the draft of the motion. Move to approve the design concept presented by the Needham Community Re Revitalization Trust Fund for the wrapping of the town common transformer boxes. The commission expressed the general opinion that the use of specific design elements should be restrained to maximize integration of the overall aesthetic of the common. Does anybody want to change that or add anything to it? I was just going to just say that um, uh, really this has been something that um, you know Ed Olson uh, you know has sort of has led the mm -hmm. uh, the um, uh, you know the project on. Um, he wanted to be able to you know to uh, be able to come up with a solution for this, and mm -hmm. so you know we've worked together. But uh, he should definitely be as part of the motion because he you know ultimately um, it was you know the concept that he spent you know so many years <laughs> actually you know helping design and and uh and be able to execute uh this was just a piece of that project okay so design concept presented by the forestry department and the nec and the nct ncrtf you need a new name <laughs> <laughs> does that does that uh, is that more accurate yeah yeah, that's great. I appreciate that, Paul. I've tried to distance myself from the common project ever since the Wellesley red chairs. Oh, yeah, you're still, you still have to walk around with a disguise, right? <laughs> but thank you. That that motion speaks correctly. Thank you. Thank okay. you very much. All right. So then moved to approve the design concept presented by the Forestry Department and the Needham Community Revitalization Trust Fund for the wrapping of the town common transformer boxes. The, co the commission expressed the general opinion that the use of specific design elements should be restrained to maximize integration into the overall aesthetic of the common. Do I hear a second? Second. Second. I'm sorry, who was that? Marshall first? Yeah. Okay. Um, and a vote will be by roll call. Marshall? Yes. Leah? Yes. Zohar? Yes. Joe? No. No. Okay. And Gloria, yes. So it's four to one with two absences. Okay. I will send um, a formal letter of that to both you, both of you, Paul and Ed. So you have that when you take this going forward. That'd be great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much for your presentation. Great. Thank well, you. thank you all for all your input and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll keep moving forward. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Bye. guys. Bye-bye. Okay. Um, Paul, yes, release the screen.
There are a couple of things I should note. One is that our newly elected Secretary Megan is not attending this meeting, so we don't have, I took some notes on the previous item, but Joe, could I impose on you to take notes for the rest of the meeting? I uh, I was I meant to ask you that when we first started, so I started taking notes right off the bat. Oh, excellent. Thank you. So, okay. Um, if you could just send me over your notes and I'll just compare them against mine, because obviously sure. I, I can't write as fast as people talk sometimes. Um, <laughs> But I, I, yeah, I've been uh, I've been taking those since the beginning. Great, thank you so much. That's yeah. good. Um, so I get to the minutes of the June meeting. There was no meeting in September, but the meetings the, the minutes for June were circulated. Does anybody have comments about those? I'm just double checking. I know in something there was. In the agenda, of... your name is spelled wrong. I'm looking at it right yeah. now. <laughs> two different ways. <laughs> spelled wrong in two different Oh, geez. In the, in the June meeting? Oh, oh, I threw in a T as well. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's it's all right. Um, I'm checking the the minutes, Joe. I was trying to look for them because I knew in the agenda I'll it say was that. spelled. I I, 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 it took me about three or four meetings to spell your name rightly. I think I got it right now. Uh, yeah, it looks, <laughs> looks good up there. It's a uh, challenge. Oh, sorry. Um, I don't know if it was the June meetings, but I did send a comment, I think, uh, uh, about the uh, seal and branding committee uh, language mm -hmm. in the uh, minutes. Uh, okay. Correct, you... Correcting the, I don't, I don't have it handy, I think. You uh, said, you said it, Marshall? Yes, I, I sent it to Gloria, right. I think, and, and to you, Joe, I think. All right. I'll, I'll take a look at it. I apologize if I missed it. Um, uh, was it about the distinction between the, the logo and the seal? Yeah. Yes, it was. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. it says, the first says, Chair Grice and Member Davis briefed the commission on the current state of the seal review and proposals noting that the final town seals will be an official logo as well as a branding logo. Um, that should probably be changed to something like um, the, the final product will be an official town seal as well as a branding logo. Branding logo. Yeah. So the final, yeah. So change, so change that line to final. The final products will be an official town seal as well as a branding logo. You're talking about the last sentence, Gloria. Uh, the, no, the second sentence. No, the first sentence. I'm sorry. Chair Grice and Member Davis brief the commission. Yeah. See that. So proposals noting that the final. So starting with town seal, yeah. the final products oh, will be okay. an official town seal as well as a branding logo. So replace town seals with products and the first logo with town seal. And then later in that, the finalized design for the logo is projected to be ready at the end of June. And I think for the seal, what is it, Marshall, November? Well, it's already November. Um, December. Yeah, when's the next meeting? November, I think. Yeah. I, I don't know if that'll be the final, but yeah. it should be but getting yeah, close. The, the, the seal won't be finalized in June, but the um, uh, logo was. Logo should be, yeah. Logo was voted on, so that's. Yeah, exactly. The, yeah. Okay, any other changes or, or? I'm sorry, what did you want the last sentence to say, Gloria? I'm sorry. Uh, the finalized design for the logo is projected to be ready by at the end of June. Okay. Because the, the town seal's not. Okay. Sorry, I have such a noisy family. Um, are there any other questions or comments about the minutes? Okay, then I am I move that the minutes be accepted as we just amended. Um, take a roll call vote, Marshall? Uh, yeah, uh, yes. Leah? Yes. Zohar? Yes. Yeah. Joe? 
Yes. Gloria is yes, so five to zero with two absences. Okay. Oops. Now, pardon me, but I just lost my agenda. Those are minutes and... There we go. Okay, um, the next order of business is the schedule of meetings. I just want to reiterate, these were the meetings that we approved at the uh, June meeting. And I believe also, um, have been approved, I think, or they have been sent to Louise and I think we have been approved on the schedule. Uh, we did have to make that alteration in May because of town meetings. So that May 19th date is an odd one for us. So just be aware of that. Um, and we'll, of course, mention it again. And, and some of these are not on our regular third Monday because of the Monday holidays that had to be worked around. But it, it works out to pretty much a month monthly um, monthly schedule. And also confirming we elected new officers for the year in June. I'm staying on as chair. Leah is taking over as vice chair and Megan is taking over as secretary. And now I am very happy to introduce our new commissioner, Zohar Gorman. Um, as you know, Laura um, resigned or you know, she resigned from the commission last June. And the um, vice, the 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 vice chair of the select board, went through the search process, and we reviewed Zohar's um, application and interviewed her, and she was approved for the job. I hope she's been sworn in. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, you just want to say, just introduce yourself and say a few words. Okay. Thanks, Gloria. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Zohar. Um, I've been a Needham resident for only 10 years. I live in a historic house, which is how I know Gloria, because I've been knocking on her door and reading her emails furiously for 10 years now. Um, and I'm looking forward to giving back to the community. I was involved in different volunteering roles um, throughout the years and um, happy to be back and doing something different and doing it with you. So thanks. Sohar owns the historic um, Josiah Noyes house on Farnham Circle. She's a neighbor, in fact, of um, Jeff Heller. Yeah, <laughs> a little exactly. cluster of historic. Yeah, a little cluster. Right. Jeff is the one that sent me a text message and said, "Hey, there's an opening." Yeah. So I think she I, said we've been yeah, chatting yeah. about the history of the town and the history yeah. of her house and the history of the neighborhood for many years. So I think. Um, it's going, you know, your your um, interest in history is going to be a good, good. Uh, addition and, to this board. And, 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 and Gloria, just to say, I don't call it the Noise House. We call it the Ebenezer House. The Ebenezer House? We talk about Ebenezer all the time, Eb. <laughs> Does Eb <laughs> haunt your house out of curiosity? Well, no, but I think that there are ancestors that do. But Eb is the one that built the house. So we, oh. oftentimes, we kind of cheer him every now and again, like, cheer him. <laughs> Not Josiah, because he wasn't very much fun. He was a teetotaler, and he did some nasty things to the children, as you know. And he was, always was um, yeah, he was a difficult character. Yeah, yes. I'm not a, I'm not a big fan. So I like. <laughs> so he had, did, actually was, did some great things too. That I'm uh, well, he fun. did. He did some really important things. He Dr. did Jones, absolutely. Um, anyway, <laughs> but he was a crusty old curmudgeon too. It's yeah. True. So yeah, I like to say Macintosh before noise. <laughs> Um, we had talked earlier, we talked in the spring about asking the um, building commissioner, Joe Proniak, to come and talk to us. Um, I had been puzzling about this and I realized that we really need to sort of think about what kind of discussion we want to have, what it is we want to address with him, uh, rather than just, you know, sort of plunking him down at the table and staring at him or complaining about the way the Tolman Gay House was handled or any anything like that um but i know jeff 
um, was very interested in this. So I am inclined to put that off until next month. So until Jeff can have some input, if that's all right with you guys. Okay. Um, happy to announce that the Emory Grover building renovations are for all defense and purposes completed. The school department has moved back in and there's going to be a public rededication on November 16th at 10 a.m. on the front lawn of the Emory Grover and there will be tours of the building and you are all cordially invited. Um, the role of the commission in preserving the building was an important one and we definitely want to you know, show up and be there, be there and show the flag and, and you know, continue to, to voice just how important we think it is that, that public buildings, especially, and public buildings with such a deep history in the town are not discarded. And speaking of which, um, the Joshua Lewis House on South Street, uh, you probably all know by now um, that the house had been purchased by Linda Bean for the NC Wyeth Reading Libraries and Research Foundation. But um, when Linda passed last spring, the plans for the endowment were not finalized and the foundation uh, made the decision to sell the house in order to use the assets to um, create, create the endowment for the rest of the project. Um, so a house that we thought was safe from, from possible demolition is now back on the market. Um, the realtor I know is very dedicated to trying to find an owner for it, but um, the foundation just wants to sell it and they are willing to sell it as land. Um, I would like us to be able to send them a letter advocating for its preservation and pointing out <laughs> that they have, they have a responsibility um, to the history of the house and the town. Um, I was hoping to have something drafted, but it's been kind of a um, it's been a kind of a roller coaster in my life the last month, so it didn't get done. So um, I will try and get something circulated that we can discuss at the next meeting um, because I really do think they need to have they they need to hear from the preservation organizations in town that this is a priority and it's not just a, a property that can be sold and torn down and mansionized. Lori, if you need some help, I'm happy to partner with you on that. Great. Thank you. Yeah, I'll give you a call. Um, okay, so then the other things were kind of uh, just looking forward, looking at the priorities for this year, the two things that I would really like to focus on are the creation of new local historic districts. Um, the first one on my list was going to be the Joshua Lewis House. Um, but that, you know, that, that may have to wait. Um, we are still waiting, right, Miles, for final legislative approval of the historic district bylaw, which should come through in, uh, I believe, November. And once yeah. that is done, um, we can start thinking of ways, we can start actively working toward uh, creating new districts. So we should be thinking about uh, potential properties or neighborhoods that might be amenable. Obviously, that will take a process of um, discussion with the with the residents and the homeowners. Um, in general, a way to publicize the bylaw and its benefits. I'm sure there are a lot of people who own historic houses, and I've heard from them. You know, what can I do? And the past, um, really, the past. Um, options have been things like the historic New England preservation easement, which is a great program, but you know, it's about $75,000 now, you know, that's, that's a big, that's a big chunk of change. And it's a lot of people just, you know, that's, that's a lot. Um, the advantage of the LHD is it's inexpensive. It doesn't cost you anything other than a lot of um, elbow grease. Cause we do of course have to go to town meeting ultimately to approve new districts. But <clears throat> it is an option that I think several people have already mentioned that they're interested in. Um, I think we will find more who are, who really wanna preserve their historic house and don't know 
at this point what the best way to do it is. So we should be thinking about ways to publicize the bylaw to get in front of historic house owners and let them know that this is an option and how to get the ball rolling. Um, we will ultimately need to be able to sort of create a pipeline uh, and assist assist the homeowners with, with going through this process and also possibly discussing the, the effort with the planning board um, and coordinate coordinate this work as well and with the select board. Um, so we go through the legislative process as, as smoothly as possible. So that's that's sort of one of our <clears throat> one of our pr uh, priorities that I'd like to look at this year. And the second is well, Laurie, um, can I just yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm I'm also, as you know, a member of the Community Preservation Commission. Uh, mm -hmm. um, took Laura's uh, place on that board, and um, one of the issues that we discussed there is how to publicize that committee's work mm -hmm. um, in terms of getting uh, proposals from uh, town agencies for funding for projects, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And so recently, there was an uh, uh, an article in the uh, uh, Observer. Um, I don't know if you noticed it, anyone noticed it, but there was a, um, a nice discussion of what the committee does and um, getting out to the public, uh, the fact that this committee is there, you're actually paying for it as part of your tax bill. Um, and uh, I wondered if maybe uh, some sort of interview with the observer uh, mm -hmm. might be a way of at least getting out to the public at large, uh, the residents of Needham, that there is this concept and right. uh, perhaps other other property owners together might consider looking into it. That's a good idea. That's a very good idea. And also um, since you know we are anticipating legislative approval, that would be a good um, opportunity to essentially announce that the bylaw's been been approved and is open for business, so to speak. Thank you. I like that. Um, and the other, the other thing I want would like to look at this year. I know this is a big, two, it's it's two big, two big projects. But um, we've been talking for years about revisions to the demolition delay bylaw, which is incredibly ineffective. And um, over the past few years, Laura Dorfman, Rick Hardy, Don Langowitz, all former commission members, have compiled information about information about what other, other towns are doing. Um, and how how the more success how the towns who are more successful at preservation are using their their bylaws and um, we wanted to look at that compile some of that information consult with the Mass Historical Commission about the best state standards and practices um, they think our bylaw is extremely laborious and rather quirky um, and they are correct. Uh, the standard is age-based. That has not been um, a favorite strategy in Needham, but um, that may be changing. So that's something to look into, whether, you know, all houses over 100 years or some, you know, some objective number like that. Um, because that also makes it easier for homeowners and for realtors and for builders to just know rather than having to constantly, you know, check up and see or find, you know, by surprise that their house is on the inventory was put there four owners ago, um, that kind of thing that, you know, any house within this age bracket is considered um, historic. But then it also will require changes to the way our bylaw is structured. Um, and so that's going to be a process of consultation with the select board of the town council as well to make those changes in the language of the bylaw. So, so those are the two things I would primarily like to focus on this year. And if anybody has any other projects or topics that they would like to um, be looking at, certainly um, either raise it now or you know think about it and raise it at a future meeting. Okay, so. Does anybody have any new business or any other topics they would like to raise at this meeting? No, we're good? Okay. Then our next meeting is at, is on November 18th at 7 p.m. Uh, in the Great Plain Room. I am hoping that it will be live 
and I will be probably still limping, but at least walking better than I am now. <laughs> You're walking um, great. That's very my, my daughter's watching me practice with my cane and getting off the walker and getting to my cane, but it's been two weeks. It's, it's pretty good. Um, okay. So uh, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second? Second. Second. Okay, roll call. Marshall. Uh, yes. Leah. Yes. Zohar. Yeah. Joe. Yes. And chair votes yes. That's five to zero with two absences. Thank you, everybody, so much. We'll see you soon. Thank Miles. you. Thank you. Thanks, Miles. Bye. Thanks, Miles. Miles. Thanks for taking notes, Joe. Yeah. Yes. Hey, Miles. Do you still there?